Millions of people don't know what they own. They have no idea how much their things are worth and they're completely taken advantage by banks, landlords, insurance companies and other financial institutions that prey on ignorance. Today we'll be talking about how to make a list of personal assets a step-by-step guide. Hi there, my name is Craig from Trendy Money and I have a passion for helping people when it comes to their finances. Today we're going to go over the process of why and how you should make a list of all your personal assets from start to finish. This will help you when it's time for taxes or estate planning. In this day and age, it's really easy to get ripped off when you don't know what your stuff is worth. You could be throwing away thousands of dollars every year. Don't believe me? Then keep listening for a few more minutes. I'm going to show you exactly why making a list of your personal assets is so important and then walk you through the entire process step by step so that you can do it yourself. It might seem like a lot at first, but trust me, it's not as hard as it seems. Let's jump right in. The reason for this video is that we were contacted by one of our subscribers, Margaret. This is her story. Margaret had an arts collection worth over $150,000, but she didn't know how much it was worth. So she decided to make a list of everything she owned just in case someone ever tried to steal from her. One day, Margaret's house caught fire and burned down completely with her artwork inside. Nothing was on scale including her paintings. Thanks to making a list of all her personal assets, including photos and receipts, she was able to claim for them, even though no one knew they existed but herself. Coming up shortly is one tip that saves so many people hours of legal wranglings and court cases. You do not want to miss this tip. Before we discuss that, I'll show you some other really important tips. Please note, this video is not intended as legal information and does not provide legal advice. If you need legal advice, contact a licensed attorney. Listing your personal assets can be tedious and time consuming. Despite the hassle, effort will pay off when you need to make an insurance claim if your home is broken into or destroyed by fire or flood. You can also use it to determine asset distribution as part of an estate plan or if you become incapacitated and can't communicate. There are a few simple steps you can follow in order to make a list of your personal assets. So you've been putting it off making a list of your personal assets but it's time to get started. Here are some tips on how to make an inventory of your assets. Your personal inventory should include as much information about each item. This includes a detailed description of the items, list of physical assets and categories that reflect what type of asset you own, such as automobiles, jewellery, or valuable collections to keep your list complete. Include a fair market value in order to get an idea which things are worth more than others, so that they can be sold off first, or if one is stolen, you have some means of getting reimbursed by insurance companies accordingly. It is essential to list as much information about your assets on paper, including a detailed description of each item. You should categorize all items in one central location for ease of access, so that you can easily find everything again if needed later. A good idea would be to transfer your paper list onto a Google Sheet. This means it is safe, won't get lost, and you or other family members can access it from anywhere or any device. Remember, if you don't know what you own, how can you protect yourself? Let's go. There are two main types of assets, tangible and intangible. Tangible items include properties such as vehicles, clothes, watches, furniture, jewellery, anything you can see and touch is considered to be tangible in nature. Intangible properties don't share this characteristic but still have value nonetheless. This includes stocks and bonds that represent ownership interests in companies or other entities, intellectual property like patents, copyrights on original artistic works, literacy creations, etc. Also, remember that your life in insurance has a cash benefit. It should be treated as a financial asset, as should your state retirement fund if you have a legal right to it. Some items may be difficult to classify since they have elements of both categories. When it comes to priceless family heirlooms, a little bit of both worlds may apply. For example, while such jewellery is considered in the physical category and has been passed down generation after generation with special occasions being its main use, at the same time any number of factors, be they sentimental 
or monetary value can bump these items into another category. Some other items might also seem like they belong under two different categories. For example, maybe some piece has both sentimental value, physical, while being worth more than a million dollars, financial. The key here is to understand what makes each type unique. However, you don't have to worry about making a strict distinction between the two categories. Just put items in whatever category you think it best belongs to on your list. It is more important that all of them are listed than where they appear. So just do what feels right to you. What's really important here is just getting every item down on paper. Try not to sweat if some end up being grouped together or spread around when others might feel better at another place. The point is just brain dump everything down on paper. Rack your brain. Now add your personal information. This is super important if something happened to you or you're in a very bad accident. Watch this as if something happens to you, you will be happy you took the next 30 seconds out to watch this next segment. Documenting your personal information will help attach you to your assets and keep them safe. Include a good amount of information on the inventory list such as name, passport number, income tax ID or social security numbers if applicable, location of your will and signature for verification. You can also include names of executors in your will, safety deposit locations with corresponding access codes if they apply, email accounts together with passwords that are needed by bills, accounts, online profiles, etc. Definitely add in your online passwords to this list so people know how to access them if need be after your death or disability leaves you unable to manage the task yourself. Now it's time to describe your items in more detail. Why? Making a list of your assets is a tedious and time-consuming process. It's not just about the money, but also sentimental value that can never be replaced. You need to make sure that you include everything in order to get the maximum amount from your insurance company if anything were to happen. But keep watching for the most important tip I can give you when it comes to personal asset management. Accurate documentation is an important part of filling out your asset inventory list, especially when it includes all pertinent details about yourself so that there is less room for confusion later down the line regarding what belongs specifically to you or other people. The more information you provide, the easier it will be to identify your assets and determine their value. You should move through each room in detail, describing what there is, as well as where anything was purchased from, found, or gifted to you. Include a detailed description of every item that may have sentimental meaning for you, but might not necessarily hold much worth, such as clothes, books, photos, etc. So make sure to include these items on your list too. The best way to organize this inventory is dividing them into categories. For example, jewelry, electronics, entertainment equipment, valuables, collections like artwork and antiques, then anything else can go under miscellaneous category, which could include things from clothing down to personal items. Make sure you take pictures and keep valuable appraisals on file in case of disputes. For example, if there is a dispute about the value between an owner and another party, because they disagree over what has been verified as being true with regards to authenticity, then it might be possible that they can solve the disagreement by looking at either photographs or copies of any appraisal reports which have already been completed in the past. It is very important to retain a healthy outlook on your possessions. A great way of doing this often goes overlooked, but it's worth giving some consideration. Prioritize the value of all items as an aggregate unit instead of treating them as individual items. This next tip is the one you've been waiting for. It has saved so many people hours of legal wranglings and court cases. Don't let other people get their hands on your assets. This is how. Don't forget to provide evidence of ownership. If you don't, other people can try and claim your possessions as their own. To prove ownership of your property, you need to provide evidence such as deeds and certificates. You also need to list the names of any persons who have legal authority over these properties like yourself or someone else that has power over them. When listing financial assets with account numbers, make sure it is clear which name belongs to who in order for others not involved in the process to easily navigate through all the parts. Provide acquisition details where necessary. When you're writing about your belongings, it's a good idea to include details of how the item came into your possession. For example, did someone gift them to you or were they an inheritance? Were they purchased at some point in the past and now they have sentimental value? If the items are expensive, think more than $100. Consider keeping receipts for when you made that purchase. So if anything goes wrong with these goods down the line, then you're able to file an insurance claim, not just replace what was lost. It's important to keep detailed records of where you buy your items because different stores have different warranties. 
warranties. We know that it can be difficult to keep track of all your purchase receipts and warranties. It's a good idea when you buy an expensive item to simply take a photo of the receipt. You can then save these photos to any device that suits you. Imagine this, you've just been robbed and you need to make a list of all your personal assets. It can be difficult to remember all the items in your home and this is why you need to do the next step. Include location information, otherwise it could be lost forever. Documenting your assets will help you or someone else accurately track the details, including where they are located. It is important to know where you keep your belongings. For each of the items that are in your possession, make a note about location and any special security requirements for accessing it. For example, your personal assets inventory might read as follows. Location and contact person responsible for access account information, date opened, account type and current status. Your tangible assets may read jewellery and cash located in the safe, Monet painting is in the dining room above the fireplace. Time to note special conditions for certain items. It's important to keep track of your personal property and any other items that are worth a lot. It's really important to know what belongings may be valuable enough so that they need special attention or retain certain actions taken care of the right way. Just like expensive jewellery, art pieces, collectibles, antiques valued at more than a thousand dollars should have their own descriptions along with estimates on current values, given condition and intent from transfer into another person's possession and vice versa. This is important to include the individual value of each item with a description on current condition. Remember to take photos or video footage of any pieces if you can so they're easier to remember what they are and to provide to insurance companies or law enforcement. Now it's time to finish your inventory list and arguably the most important element to this whole process. This is the last thing you need to do on your inventory list. Date it. Once you have all physical and financial assets listed, attach copies of relevant documentation and finish up with personal information including any additional items that did not specifically fit into either category but should be included in case they are needed at a later date and then time stamp the document a list without a date can be more confusing than no list at all so make sure this step completes the process the document now includes every aspect if something does happen unexpectedly like an emergency or indeed death a good rule of thumb is adding today's day in month day format followed by a year at the very end of the list title for example my inventory list november 22nd 2021 by now you've listed all your assets both tangible and intangible what you really need to do next is protect that list by all means necessary watch the very next video called protecting your assets list it's a very short video and will make all the difference in making sure all your assets are protected follow those simple steps so that you're prepared for any situation or emergency. The video is on the screen now and listed in the description. Finally, please like this video now. It will help other people who also want to know how to make a list of personal assets. By liking this video now, you will be a real help to them and to us. Also, subscribe too, so you don't miss out on any other important content that may one day have